Howdy folks, it is Scanner here. In this video, I want to talk about how and why I spend quite a lot of time thinking about planning and testing how I'm going to paint my models. So the vast majority of my time spent actually on the paint job of any model is all done in my head. And this is something that I had to do and learned to do as a kid. I wasn't exactly growing up in the richest of households, so it could be months and months and months between being able to, you know, purchase any new hobby related anything. Sometimes it could have been up to a year. I might have gotten something for my birthday or I might have gotten something for Christmas. But the pile of shame was a foreign concept to me. And um, when I was a kid, I did not understand the idea of having so many miniatures that you could not paint them. I had the opposite problem. I had so many hours to paint and no miniatures to paint in it. So what I ended up doing was buying miniatures and then spending forever thinking about the paint scheme and planning what I was going to put on the, on, the, on the model and where and examining the model and figuring out what was chainmail and what was cloth and what was armor and what was supposed to be, you know, leather and just obsessing about it. And it actually kind of built up a reasonable skill for today where I have way too many models and very much understand the concept of a pile of shame. I can still think about painting all those models. I own them, I will paint them someday. And in the meantime, I can plan. So here's a really good example. My custodes just arrived. I'm putting together my custodes kill team. They just arrived in the post this morning. My plan is to get stuck into them over the weekend. Between now and the weekend, I will be thinking about painting them. I know it sounds silly because custodes are simply gold. How complex could it be? But there's an awful lot you can do with gold. There is a lot you can do with your custodes so they don't just end up looking exactly the same as everybody else's. I want to do that with mine. I want them to smack a little bit of uniqueness. I don't want them to just look like they were, you know, spray canned with uh, Retributor gold and then washed with Agrax or Reichland Flesh Shade or something like that and then dry brushed. I want them to look different i want their, the process to explain itself when people look at them i want them to go oh wow you know somebody did something a little different here the end result might be the same but how the end result appears to your eye i want it to be different so i think about it and i plan it and i'm like what if i do this and what if i do that and i almost photoshopped a model in my head to figure out what it would look like if i do this and i have this ghostly custode and the Bits of it are slowly but surely filling in over the course of the next couple of days. It will solidify and I will know what I want to do. And it's a very valuable skill because you actually save yourself time. Let's be honest here. None of us are tripping over each other, I would say, in an excess of time anymore. It doesn't seem to be the world we live in right now. Everybody's busy. Students are studying and, you know, workers are working and and. Everybody else is doing, I don't know, whatever it is that they do. But unless you make your living from hobby, there's a good chance that you're trying to squeeze in other things and then claim a little bit of time for hobby where and when you can. So sitting there and plotting and planning is always a good idea. What I like to do is I like to work in a couple of steps. The first thing is I figure out upon what scale am I going to be painting. So these guys are going to be custodes. Just for kill team, I'm not putting together an army here, so I'm going to have to paint four guys. That's not very much. The armor is going to be a reasonably simple but striking process. That's okay. I can add brush miles there if I want to. I can put in extra steps that might only bring out tiny differences in tone or color, but I can put them in. Um... It's going to be majority for play between myself and my wife, and I'm going to be putting it on the internet for people to see and judge me. So while the first part means I can pretty much do whatever I want, the second part means I should probably put a little bit of extra time into the details just to make sure they're striking and nice. 
And then the third reason I'm going to be painting it is so that I can make a video. So I want the video to impress people and make them go, wow, this guy almost knows what he's talking about. For a dumbass, I might just follow him or, you know, paint my own miniature this way or I might have learned something. So there's the main reason why I'm going to be painting my custodes. So with that in mind, I have a good idea as to how good of a paint job I could conceivably do and how much work I should put in to get there. Can I paint these custodes to a jaw dropping standard? No, I'm not a jaw dropping standard of a painter. Can I paint them to a very reasonable standard that lots of people out there might look at and think, wow, I would like to have my custodes look like that. And if this video is good enough, I might be able to do it then yes. So there'll be plenty of effort actually put into painting the model. Between now and then, what I will do is I will take my um, little bottles of paint, of which I have many, and I will start to build my palette. I will line them all up so I can see them all beside each other and see how the colours interplay. I'll start with the black, because black will be my undercoat more than likely, I'll probably put more Frank brown beside it because I might mix some brown into the black simply because when you're going over gold, it can be a good idea to not have complete black underneath. Then I'll put tinny tin beside that because tinny tin by Vallejo, that's my cheek color when it comes to gold. And then I'll slowly build up to my gold and whatever washes go over my gold. And then I will break the line of paints with a couple of paint pots distance, and I will start to line up my detail colors, my reds and my blues, and maybe my purples and my greens and all the rest of it. And I will have them all there in front of me. And I'll just, for the next you know couple of days, even though I'm not gonna be painting, I will have this constant reminder that all these colors are going to exist together very, very close, like millimeters between most of them. And if anything stands out and feels awkward or looks stupid or dumb, or if there's going to be a very tough time getting from the sense that they make, like blending through them all or something like that, then I will know and it will have hit me before I actually put a paintbrush anywhere near the miniature. After that, I build the model as early as possible if I can. I like to have the model built a couple of days before I'm going to start painting it. I like to think about it within the pieces that it's going to, am I going to do like a sub assembly or am I going to just put it all together and paint it? Probably do sub assembly for custodes to be honest. And just seeing the model beside all the colors once again helps to inform, do these colors belong on this geometry? That is my line of thinking. Is there anything here that looks silly? because sometimes it happens where you're painting through something, you have your heart set on a, a color scheme, you haven't quite thought of it in relation to the model and it just doesn't work. You need to change something up and it's a bit of a pain in the butt. So the more you can think and look and visualize before you even start putting paint onto the model, the better position you are gonna be in. I am adamant about this. And then the final thing, that I like to do is most of the time, if I'm starting a big unit, I will have a test model. I will have something that I paint up and look at and decide, do I want the rest of the unit to look like this? If the answer is yes, I go in and I start painting the rest of the unit. If the answer is no, I break out the debt all and I strip the model. Um, not the best use of time to do uh, test units or test models, but worth doing, I believe, for the majority of people. You can paint at a comfortable pace. You're not being overwhelmed by the idea of doing a whole squad. You spot the flaws in both your color scheme and your methodology and your time allotments, your brush miles, the whole thing. Uh, it all just starts to make a lot of sense. Like, can I do 10 or 20 of these guys? Is it going to rattle my brain? Do I need to cut down maybe a couple of layers off the leather just so I'm not absolutely cracking up trying to get all these like bridles done perfectly or whatever. And that's just the way I approach it. I like to break it all down and have a process. And mostly I like to think about it because when I was a kid, 
90% of my hobby was mental. It was imagining painting things, not actually painting things. It was considering the idea of someday owning something. And even though now I'd probably fall into a... I'd kind of be a lot closer to the concept of a whale than I would be to where I was when I was a kid. Um, It's certainly something I still love to do. I still love to mentally Photoshop models when I see them. Um, It's a huge amount of fun and it has been very rewarding as I return back to painting and try and sharpen up my old skills. But yeah, that's all the stuff I think about. And the reason why I think all this stuff is so important is I think overall, in the long term, you save a lot of time. That's why it actually matters. You end up saving yourself a lot of time and a lot of tears when things that possibly could have gone wrong don't actually go wrong. It actually goes right. And your model ends up looking really lovely because you really thought about it before you did it. And that's it. That's why I think it pays off to think about your color schemes quite a lot. So yes, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, you might just like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, thank you so much for watching.